Hey, uh, welcome to uh, Node.js Foundation Enterprise Conversations. I'm Michael Rogers, uh, and with me is Steve Faulkner, uh, the Director of Engineering at Bustle. Just say hi, Steve. Hey, how's it going? Good, good, good. How you doing? Good. Can't complain. Cool, cool, cool. Where Where are you uh, calling in from? Uh, Philadelphia. Um, Bustle is based out of New York, but um, uh, me and another engineer here are located in Philadelphia. Cool, cool. That's awesome. That's great. How's the weather out there right now? <laughs> uh, it's actually gotten really hot, like too too hot for for end of October. But I don't know. I'm not I'm not super upset about it. It means I get to ride my bike more. Cool, cool, cool. So uh, why don't you tell me a little bit about your your team over there at Bustle uh, and what your role is and, and how you're using Node.js? Um, yeah. So I'm uh, my my full title is the director of platform engineering, um, which I guess is just a too long way of saying that I, I'm in charge of backendy things. Um, but our team is is pretty. How do I want to describe it? it? It it's pretty full stack across the board. Like we we don't spend a lot of time worrying about well that person's on back end or that person's on front end. Um, you know we have people who are good at certain things and we like to use them uh, to do those things. So. Uh, as a result, a lot of people on our team a lot, spend a lot of time on all parts of the stack, which is awesome. Um, and that's kind of how we use Node, because cool. we can use it everywhere. <laughs> right, right. So uh, what, what is that stack? I mean, I, I love hearing Node.js everywhere, but uh, I'm a bit curious kind of wh what you are using in, in the back end and the front end and all that kind of stuff, what your okay. preferred libraries are on your team. Gotcha. So basically, uh, Bustle started out as a, a Rails app, and then over the, about the last two years, has kind of been transitioning to uh, Node everywhere. Um, you know, JavaScript on both the front end and the back end. Um, it's kind of our preferred stack. We we were very early adopters of um, you know what's being called serverless uh, architecture. So most of our uh, code now runs on uh, AWS Lambda and AWS API Gateway. Um, so as a result, you know we're not using like necessarily a specific like backend framework for anything. Um, you know, we kind of those tools provide some of that functionality, um, and you know, it just kind of depends on the needs what we're actually doing. Um, as far as data storage, we do a lot of stuff with Dynamo, Redis, and Elasticsearch are probably our our big three for where we put stuff. Cool. And what about the front end? Are you using any uh, fun tools for the build chain stuff? Yeah. So um, we do. We have uh, our main website is an Ember. Um, we have a smaller property called romper.com that's targeted at uh, millennial moms, and that is uh, built using riot.js. Um, on the back end, we use Ember for some internal tools and CMS products, as well as uh, Preact and React in some places. Uh, we're, we're always kind of experimenting with new things. Like we're, we're definitely not afraid to be like, oh, there's this cool new thing out there. Let's try it. Let's see how it works. I was just checking out Preact the other day. It's a pretty cool little library. It's it's a lot of what React does without all of React. <laughs> yeah, it's it's definitely neat. We've got a, a couple people on the team who have become really big fans of it. So cool. So what what made you move to Node.js? You said that you started with Rails. What why did you move to Node instead of a different library? Um, a runtime, I should say. Yeah, I I think there's several reasons. Um, I think that you know the first is we we really were intrigued by um, Lambda and some of the things it could do, and you know kind of how it could solve some of our business needs. So Lambda you could use at the time uh, I believe it was only Java and Node, and we weren't all that excited about putting stuff uh, on Java and Lambda. So we we're like, all right, let's try Node. You know, and it, the truth is we'd already been using Node for build tools for a while before that. I mean, we were big early adopters of Ember, and so using uh, Node to build out Ember CLI and using Node to you know build all of our front end assets and stuff like that. It's something we'd done for a while. So we had experience with it, um, and we just kind of started using it for back end stuff and really liked it, and we're super happy. That's awesome. I always love to hear that. <laughs> You hear like I, I never get tired of hearing the same story over and over again about how rad Node is. So. Uh, I, I I don't blame you. I mean, like I'm I'm happy to preach it and say that it's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So as you transition to Node, you know, off of Rails and and all of that, um, how has that affected your team and and the business and everything? Um, I think that it's kind of given us a lot more flexibility in how our our team is organized. I think that something that people talk about but maybe isn't the first line priority for node is the fact that it's javascript on the you know the front end and the back end and i think there's a ton of 
like very, um, you know, not easily quantifiable benef benefits of having that. Uh, you know, if you're up late and the only engineer online and there's some problem and, you know, it's on the back end and you're a front end person, it's really nice when it's also JavaScript. So, you know, there's, there's even if you're not super familiar with it, um, there's a chance you can jump in and potentially fix something. Um, I think it just gives us our engineers a lot more flexibility about you know what they're excited about and what they get to work on makes them happier from a you know development perspective. Um, you know from the business perspective, I think we've just got a lot more mileage out of Node in, some, in terms of performance, our ability to deploy to things like Lambda. Um, you know Node, we've always been pretty impressed with how well it performs, especially in really async heavy operations, and uh, you know we tended to do a lot of that. I mean, that's a lot of what web development is, and we found it to be a really good match. Yeah, that's great. That's that's another thing that we hear a lot is that it really makes the the skill set of every developer much more transferable when you do Node everywhere, right? Yep. Allows people to jump in all over the place. Um, so it sounds like uh, I'll be seeing you uh, in a little over a month and a half, I think, at, at Node Interactive. You're speaking. What, tell me about uh, what you're going to be talking about. So the, the title of my talk there is The Hitchhiker's Guide to Serverless. And nice, nice. <laughs> I, my, my goal with the talk is basically to kind of ground serverless in uh, reality. Um, so serverless has a lot of hype around it right now. There's lots of tweets. There's lots of medium posts, uh, which is great. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm really excited about kind of the buzz it's getting. But it's, you know, it's a lot of like maybe what I would call thought leadering and not so much like, oh, here's some actual serverless stuff that we did. Um, so yeah, if, if there's more medium posts than libraries <laughs> for it, there's probably a thought leader issue. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, so I'm, I'm basically going to be talking about you know, what serverless means to us at Bustle, how we use it. Um, I, you know, to, you know, we were using like AWS Lambda and API Gateway, which are considered you know, serverless architectures. And um, we use that end to end right now on all of our properties. So we're sending you know north of ten million events a day through Lambda, and you know our fifty million users a month um, that end up going through all that software as well. So we're big fans. We think it's worked out really well. Um, I'm not going to say it's perfect, and so I'll you know be talking about that in my talk. What's the good parts? What's the bad parts? Um, also talk a lot about the some of the frameworks and libraries around it because that's somewhere that is still a little bit immature, and so a lot of people are, you know, well, how are we going to use this at, you know, kind of production scales, or what happens when we have, like, 50 different services that are using these um, tools, and so we have our own open source framework that we use at Bustle, and so I'm going to be talking a little bit about that, too. Awesome, awesome. That sounds great. I'm looking forward to that talk. Well, thanks for coming on, and uh, thanks for, for also coming to Node Interactive. I'll, I guess I'll see you in about a month and a half. Yeah, it sounds great. I'm, it's my first Node Interactive, and so I'm, I'm extremely excited to check it out. Yeah, it's going to be a great time. Good talking cool. with you. Thanks, man. Thank you.